So we are going live. Hello. Today is what? Today is Wednesday, um, April 8th, 2015. And um, we have, um, I have a topic. Before announcing the topic, let me say, say hi to everybody. So I have Feyre. I would never met Feyre. I have Justin. Hey, Justin. Hey, Caitlin. We already met. Uh, we just chatted before we started broadcast. Hey, Maria. Hey, Sean. And Zina. Hello. Hello. Blessing. So, so our close, nice friend of Jim and I is um, is close to going on the other side. Uh, she is one of us. One of their how do we say, one of their people of the same frequency, of the same mind. When I speak to her, when she speaks to me, um, I feel like I'm talking to myself. It's, it's surprising how closely we think and how we resonate. And somehow it happened that um, uh, cancer is getting her and, um, and she finally thinks that maybe that's what I hear from Jim. I didn't speak to her recently. I just got a message from her. Uh, she thinks that maybe it's time for her to, to just to accept it and, and just go. So, you know, we did. I did that webinar on death and dying um, last time. I don't remember what was the cause. By some, I'm blank and I'm blocked from that. But, but I, I know it's, it's a frequent topic of mine. And, uh, and uh, the main message is just just accept it, accept it, take it easy, take it philosophically. And there is a lot of conversation about that. Uh, I, I, I usually start that, that topic just mentioning that um, I investigated my genealogy, my, my origins and ancestors, and I one of my lines, everybody has branching lines of ancestors. One of my lines comes from from uh, many, many generations of uh, Jewish reb uh, rabbis, Jewish priests, Jewish rabbis. They come to the 10th century, so many, many, many uh, generations. And and what priests do, including Jewish priests, they, you know, what they do, they, they marry people, they uh, officiate celebrations, uh, they officiate the births, and they officiate uh, the pass, passing over and uh, memory of people who live. And that is everyday job for them. That's, uh, that's a profession to officiate that and facilitate that and uh, give people, connect people to tradition. So, so imagine yourself being being with that every day, and one one thing is just just you you, you have to live with it. You it, it's it's something that you do every day, and you you meet birth, which is uh, a celebration, and you meet death, uh, which is some sort of just other way of celebration, and and marriage and other important things in life. So. So that's just one of the outlooks. You have to kind of get immune to that and do that with grace. Uh, um, another another thing I would o often say, you know, it's all a factor of time. If you take time out, the death is not any different from birth. If it just Watch the movie of life backwards. Then death becomes birth. You come from nowhere and you're born and then you you become younger, 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 smaller, 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 and then the birth becomes pass over to the other side. So it's just an entrance and an exit. Just two doors. You enter here, you exit there. And um, Many people have uh, near-death experiences or other side experiences, and our genie, our friend genie, uh, also ha has been on other side. So, so for her, it's 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 different. It's different. She she's already sure she she had already a chance to come back and play a little bit more. And always it comes the idea of you know, is it fair? Is it fair? And would she? 
enjoy living longer and would she be useful and helpful living longer? And here I just say it's unfair. I mean, the life is doesn't seem to be very fair, and um, just things happen. You know, with all the guidance, all the help from other side, things happen, and I just see that they happen not not to our choice, and maybe not to choice of our helpers. It's it's a big topic. Is it an experiment that kind of went wrong? Is it uh, an experience which has no control? Um, which is, I guess, it is an answerable question, but but the, the question which always comes to mind, you know, what what is this? Another question is, you know, if you and I, um, I would ask everybody, if you had another choice to come back, would you cho would you choose to come to this this place and this timeline, to this kind of life? Okay. And to me, I don't know the answer. I wish I, you know, I, I wish. I have to take best and not to take worst. Not to take worst. Um, you know, I'm so attractive, attracted. I'm so attracted to how you type the answers. Someone said yes, and somebody said no. I'm so oh, attracted to. I cannot wait till I cross over. <laughs> I'm really? waiting, counting down. Actually, Tucker said I, I don't have that much I have to get ready and I said I'm ready but she said not yet Maria you still have an, <laughs> a contract to finish uh-huh here we go contractor 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 yeah I, I'm so attracted to different other realities I don't know what I will choose I, I don't you know I, I, w I want to be able to make a, an informed choice but oh, certainly, I love a lot of things here. May I, I say something, Max? Oh, go ahead. Yeah, I posted I all the questions. I actually figured that out. That, but that's my reality. I figured that out that we do have a choice where we want to go after we're, we're finished here. What do you want to do? You still have a choice. The whole life is 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 choices that you make. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you can make choices. So, because recently I realized not only we have soul family in play, you know, with Pleiadians, I, I realized I only have, you know, have soul family in Andromeda. So, it's, it's an option that I can, you know, I have a choice if I want to go there, over there, or even somewhere else that I've never been. <laughs> it is a choice. Soul tourists. Let's let's uh, tour the galaxy and uh, dimensions and choose one and another. Um, yeah, I don't know. No, uh, I guess there is a lot of I know, a lot of my life is service. Uh, where would be a, would I be of more best service? So I don't know. Um, yeah, bank for the bug, that sort of thing. I want to to do something important and and uh, meaningful. Maybe I I don't know. Is it from this life or is it internal? I don't know. Yeah, please please join the discussion. I uh, my my feeling is I would definitely be the first in line to sign back up to come back. Um, I mean, even going through my journey and especially the last the last few parts, you know, people from a different perception would probably look at it and be like, man, I would not want to have to come and you know deal with something like that again however through my most recent experience though I really truly was able to grasp <clears throat> grasp the awareness and gain the humbleness of you know and the appreciation and the 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 the, the real true heartfelt um, gratitude for everything and then from that everything just truly gets better and I understand from I've had two near-death experiences so where I understand um, I had the choice to come back on um, one of those I, I, I understand I had a choice but I also understand that I didn't have a choice either. I, I recently recalled that in meditation that 
in my review, if you will, there was a moment that was like, you know, we're we're sending you down because your energy is at your your you're necessary for, you know, the timeline for the collectives. And these are things that happened when I was like 18, 18 and 17, and then when I was like 20. So that was, you know, about 10 years ago. And it wasn't until recently when I really was able to start uncovering more than just the flash flashing out a body and and seeing the Akashic records, just seeing a bunch of pictures of my life and then coming back to body. It's 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 taken you know some some effort into doing it, but after I put the energy into it and allow myself to just let go of it, they started to come back and then the awareness and understanding did too. Um, each one of us is here as an important, like, bridge to the next, the next string that will continue the, the, the timeline, if you will, of our consciousness for us to exist. We are each a, a, a tree of life, a flower of life, and we just grow infinitely and forever together. It's it's real interesting. Anybody? Caitlin? Hello. Hello. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't really remember what the question was again. No, no question, no, just reflections. You uh, actually playing with uh, with a lot of spirits, right? And with a lot of, mm, I would say, cat energies, right? <laughs> Actually, my cat is kind of laying on me, purring right now. So I guess so. Yeah. Yeah, and cats are interesting. Cats are very healing, uh, and they're predators. I know they kill easy. You know, that's <laughs> what they do. It's a killing machine. Yeah, yeah. It's a killing machine, and then they play, and then they, as Jim said, you know, remember that? You know, I don't remember who was speaking, but. Oh, that was Fairy speaking. She said, one thing about the cat is that the cat is very analytical. And I'm looking at my cat, yes. He's not yeah. that smart, but he is analytical for sure. Uh, <laughs> he's analytical and intuitive. They, they know things without thinking, so they don't have to use their brain. They just know and use their brain just to look and enjoy and analyze. Exactly, play. yeah. Oh, I don't know if they use the brain to play, but they, they use some of that, right? I think they definitely do. Some of them, some cats are very, very intelligent. They, they just know things, and they can read energy so well. They know when you're mad or sad, or they're kind of similar to dogs, but less sympathetic, I guess. <laughs> At least that's what I can tell from my cat. Uh, but yeah, I feel like they're definitely really uh, smart. Mark, I yeah. think your cat needs pepper. <laughs> paper. Paper. <laughs> no problem. Yeah, um, um, a dog died in, you know, in my hands. It was neighbor's dog, uh, and my dogs were nearby. <clears throat> so they took it easy. I don't know. Sometimes do dogs take it not easy when when their owners die. But when a neighbor's dog died, they just took it easy. You know, it, I remember in Klingons um, and in Star in Star Trek, they they just. Uh, you know, after the, the death, the body is just a shell. It doesn't mean anything. Uh, the death of, is, um, yeah, I guess clean, clean on approaches, it makes a lot of sense. You know, they, they, they know it's coming. I mean, that's, our civilization has very strange relationship to death, right? 
very strange. It's uh, you know, it's on one on one hand, it's it, it, it it's everywhere. It's in the movies. It's in the church. It's uh, but also it's hidden. There is a lot of violent death in the movies, but there is almost no peaceful death there. And uh, most of the deaths happen, you know, in a very uh, what do you say? Um, what's that word? Uh, matter of fact, matter of fact, thing in 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 a hospice in the hospital, you know, people just or it, you know, I don't know. People know. I think people more die in the Western world in hospitals than at home. But we don't have that image of of, of real death. We have some sort of very distorted image of death. And in uh, other cultures, I don't know. In tribal cultures, it's so common. People stopped dying this way, uh, you know, like hundred years ago. The death was so so common. Like if a uh, uh, family had eight children, it meant that you know most likely they had eight more children died in early age just because of statistics. I mean, almost I would say fifty percent of children were dying just from from poor medicine. Only in, in invention of uh, antibiotics changed the change the you know that now the every every you know it went from 50 60 percent to, to close to one two three maybe so things change we have a very different view of, of death it's interesting like speaking about um, animals and also the cycle of death um, I was watching something about elephants and elephants actually they do mourn their their family like when elephants of the herd do pass away they actually like yeah. will stay with the elephant like the elephant's body and like will cry will actually grieve and mourn mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. death of another elephant and they will actually instinctively know where these elephant where their family has passed and they will actually come back to the place where they passed and actually essentially pay reverence again if you will and they visit these spots if you will too um, when they pass so it's uh, it, it's interesting that um, it is something that honored if honored if you will and, and recognized in a conscious fashion by you know the animal kingdom as well yeah uh, in a fashion part of that, um, it, it feels as if they recognize spirit. That's what I'm feeling. Is they recognize that their spirit is still with them or resides in that area, if you will. Mm -hmm. And it, to me, that's it has something to do with like consciousness and our abilities too. It's real interesting. Pardon, I'm just I'm just reflecting inside. <laughs> Egyptian culture was about death. The people, you know, people lived believing that they will come back, and to come back, you, uh, you had to preserve your body. So Egyptians didn't go, you know, really, really didn't want to go to wars outside of Egypt because they, if you died outside of Egypt and your body wasn't brought back, then you couldn't uh, get resurrected. So they used um, hired troops to do the wars outside of Egypt. The you know the officers and the, uh, you know people who could afford not to go, they they would um, they wouldn't go, they wouldn't leave Egypt. They they really looked forward to the resurrection. And um, and then you know, part of it is true. I mean, to resurrect a body, you need you need uh, DNA. So. So um, you know now the science. I think it's it's even possible to res, uh, you know clone Egyptians. You know the science is already there from mummies. It's so neat you said that. I just came across a channeling this morning, um, which it was it was an Arcturian channeling where they were saying that the idea of mummification was a gift from the Arcturians or Syrians or something. Um, not recalling correctly at the moment, but the key idea is that the idea of mummification was a gift 
However, there was something that was lost in translation, if you will, mm -hmm. that didn't fully mummify the body fully as the Egyptians thought and intended. However, that it was done correctly enough that when they come back that the material that is there is still viable and will be viable for reanimation, uh, mm -hmm. resurrection. But I don't know, the soul, would, it wouldn't be the same soul, it would be the same body, but the soul would be different. So uh, it's not it's not the same so same as resurrection. You know, just to restore the body. That what is your idea and the difference between soul and spirit? Ah, uh, it's just the words. I mean, the uh, spirit is usually used for everything spiritual, and the soul is. I guess the soul is largely misinterpreted. Like, like uh, in the Western tradition, the soul is supposed to be something. Like uh, a ghostly image of the of the body, something that lives in the body, and in that you know if you translate it to modern New Age understanding of that, the soul of the Western tradition would be, I guess, the astral body, but it's just a part of uh, of something bigger, right? The astral body is just a part of uh, the bigger spiritual body, and it's pretty sophisticated. I. Every time I had a chance to ask spirits if they have uh, their own genome, uh, you know, those who could answer that question, they said that um, it looks like yes, and it's much more huger than our genome. It's much more complicated, sophisticated. It's um, it is a, uh, it has lots of structure, lots of engineering in it, within it. Uh, it you know, well, you know, when when you start researching the topic about the bodies, there is like uh, etheric body, astral body, mental body, blah blah blah, and these names are kind of in interchangeable in different schools. They they mean different things, uh, but basically it's like uh, a skewer where on one side you have physical body and then you have multiple bodies, kind of um, what's that word? Sitting on that on that line and uh, or encompassing one another, there are platonic solids involved in building the physical body and other bodies, um, you know, world ratio, everything, fractals. Um, I I just at some place I don't remember where. I think it is in my book I reference. Uh, there was a I guess in a channeling or. Uh, from other side, they said that it is important for the health of the soul to uh, to be able to separate from physical body in, in proper healthy fashion. So in the, in the accidents when the body is destroyed quick, uh, the soul is so harmed that it's really hard to uh, that it affects the future incarnations. So, so if the if the soul separates in the death, if the soul separates and goes peacefully from the body, there is like minutes to hours process of separation of the soul. You know, you know, some part of the how do you call it? Etheric body. Etheric body is the closest to our body. So, etheric body is somehow linked to our DNA and to our brain and our thinking process goes between the brain and the etheric body and the soul that is some sort of interface pretty sophisticated on on the other side, on the etheric side. So that separation has to be sort of May I add something to that? Yes, go ahead. I think you're right about that because a lot of Muslim that's why they don't burn their body because the light body is connected to the um, uh, to physical body with those um, what you call it the um, the the energy rope as you say yep, yep. yes so if they don't disconnect properly and it takes time sometimes it depends on how dense your energy is if you're dense it takes maybe forty days depends mm. on how, your mindset your energy so if in that case, if you destroy the body, your light body still thinks alive. Some mm -hmm. in some cases they don't they don't even understand they pass away. Mm 
Mm -hmm. So it takes time for them to realize that, and you have to give them that time. If it, that does not happen, then it's going to be hard on your live body. That's why we don't we don't believe and we don't do that. We don't burn our bodies. I see. Um, yeah, that's that's an interesting question. subject, um, especially about question. also about crema uh, cremation. Yes. Uh, like, I've heard even when uh, even in cremation, I've heard that the body does still feel yes. some type of energy exchange of the heat, but n not to the degree as if you were still human on fire. You know what I mean? No, no, they Brian. What I'm trying to explain: if you are a person who who only lives in their physical form, who does not believe in higher self or anything, after you die, it takes you sometimes to realize your like a like poultry guys like ghosts. Oh, it takes I see. Time. Like it takes though. time. So when once your actually physical body is destroyed that quickly, it would be a shock for you. Well, I'm thinking of the soldiers on the battlefield, especially like in the uh, colonial time, in the um, oh during the Civil War. You know, have people who will die all of a sudden in battle. Yes. I'm wondering right. how, how they take it, how, how it affects them, because there's many as for what you call um, what we call ghosts or these energy forms that are still yes. seen, you know, there around that area, very historic areas. Well, a lot, a lot of soldiers do actually prepare for battle and prepare for, you know, are prepared for the idea of losing their lives. So some... You know, if law, if they do lose their life, I'm feeling they transition as if in a peaceful manner, if you will. Even though it could be a tragic and very abrupt fashion, brutal fashion, and whatnot. However, you know, like samurai warriors, they did meditation and and whatnot on on death. Um, so you know, there's some that are prepared for it, and there's some that aren't. Um, I got a question. Hey, Farah. Yeah, so um, how does your body don't know if, it, if it's not dead or not at the moment? How, is your, how does your body know? It's not it's your dead. body. It's not Ryan. It's not your body. It's, your con it's like uh, at that moment it's your consciousness, actually. It's not even your brain because you don't have a brain. Because you were not aware of, you know, of it here. It takes time for to for you to realize what is going on. So so basically, the brain can still be active though at the time. It's not your brain though. That's what I'm t telling you. It's not your brain, like this human brain. Yeah, there is a lot of uh, near death experiences, um, clinical death experiences, where people exit their body temporarily and they see that. Um, you know, their medical personnel you know, tries to uh, revive the body and uh, they see it usually from the saline and some of them really want to leave and some of them, you know, stay near the body. So it's clearly outside. Um, and, um, you know, people are clinically dead. Their brain is sort of, um, is dead for minutes and then they come back. Sometimes they come back quick and sometimes it's just a miracle. It's like really the body was dead for a while and then a miracle happens. Um, higher spiritual like angelic forces decide that it is very important for the person to come back and a miracle happens and the you know, dead body just starts breathing again and revives. So, so in a real keep it real moment in my situation where I technically had an overdose that's essentially where you know, higher self and angelic and source, we, you know, they overrode, you know, the situation. They're like, no, this isn't what's going to take place. We're going to imbue your life force and tether you back down to your vessel. So uh, how long can your uh, body be deceased before it's, uh, before you can't come back to it anymore if you wanted to? Uh, normally... Uh, there is a nice broadcast about that, real science, really well done. It's Radiolab. Radiolab is great spiritual. 
scientific, but you know, close. You know, the 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 people who speak, they 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 know what they saw, and they're very enlightened. Uh, so uh, it varies, but um, usually minutes and hours. But you know, coma situation can 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 last for half a year. There are people who were in coma for half a year and then come back. But coma is where your uh, brain is not fully dead. It's it's uh, it's just it doesn't communicate to outside. So dead brain, I would say minutes. Um, but I know, really, like I, yeah, go ahead. I know uh, when the body starts decaying, yeah. then that's the point of no return. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. I mean, usually, I mean, they they tell about the story that you know in ancient times, you know, how do you define if the somebody died? They they you know bring the uh, glass to your mouth, and if you don't breathe, there is no vapor there. Then that would be, or your heartbeat stops. And then at recent times, like about 80 years ago, even closer, 60 years ago, they just declared that it's not the uh, not the heart that defines, it's a brain, uh, brain function. Hmm. Yeah, brain function. Because, you know, you can keep the heart forever, but uh, if the brain is dead, then, then the person, uh, it's it's point of no return. That sort of thing. But, you know, um, I guess your main question was, if you left the body, how do you know where you should go back or to go to the light and um, go to the other side? And um, and that's where uh, usually the the welcome party is is coming and they they uh, they come to you. So typically, people are met by uh, some so, some people they know well uh, by friends and family who are on the other side who are not incarnated yet. And they welcome them and say that it's time for you to go. Uh, I I have an experience of that sort, uh, not with myself, but I had a mm, very nice close relative with me. Uh, there were two old ladies in their 80s and 90s, and um, one just you know when I was in the next room, one just said you know they they came for me. It's time for me to go, and she was ready. That she she saw the welcome party. They they, they came for her and uh, her sister, who was in the room, just um, didn't let it happen. She said, "No, nope. I want you here. It's not, you know, I override the decision. Uh, come back. No, next time." And uh, she was very strong-willed and really you know, wanted things to to you know her sister to live a little longer and. Um, and they let her stay. So that was my first-hand experience. So, uh, so um, what do they call it? How long does it how long does it take for the uh, the for reincarnation process to start? Uh, good question. Um, it's your choice. Uh, there is a lot of literature on that. Uh, my our favorite books. Um, Michael Newton, uh, the journey of the soul, and something else of the soul. I don't remember exactly. Give give me a hint. Uh, the journey of the soul, and there is something else of the soul. Is it, is it the night of the night of the soul? No, no, not the night. The, no. That okay. doesn't matter. Uh, two books, and um, he collected a lot of stories from uh, uh, hi hypnotic regre hi hypnotic regressions, and there the soul still a lot of information because he asked the right questions and he got the right answers about incarnations. Basically, um, sometimes it's very soon, like maybe the reason for you to die now is because there is an opportunity to be incarnated right away. There is a pair of people in love and it's right place for you to be. So you can get, bur get born uh, right away. So if you're ready, if um, the, uh, this, you know, the, the the play, the game is is is, you know, the, there is an opportunity in that game. Maybe, maybe that's, you know, that's a good time for you to live because it's a good time for you to to come back soon. But typically, about, for, yes, go ahead. About suicide, if you killed yourself before the time is right. Uh, good question. Um, let me finish the previous. I remember your question. So, but typically it takes much longer. Um, 
usually it's uh, the the time there is not equivalent to time here. Uh, the time there is stretchable. It's very very stretchable. So you can, um, but you you basically you, as after you know after the flights usually it's uh, you know when people fly and then they have kind of or especially in, in you know in, during the last war the big war uh, the the people go in battle they come back and they then they discuss what happened and they get some sort of review of their performance and that review of their performance of our performance happens after we come to the other side and usually you have guides who help you to review your life and then you have some some sort of homework where you replay your life uh, most important parts of your life and you replay it from different perspective from your own perspective just to remember what happened and from the perspective of every person involved especially the ones which were offended by you when you were in range in rage uh, righteous rage or uh, some other way you offended someone you come back to that scenario and just re relive that life as your other self as another person and uh, get harmed and you learn your lesson there so that's a big part of, uh, of, of before you go back you you have to kind of relive your life many times in many scenarios and you get lots of help and guidance how to how to do that and then you come back so many people don't don't come back at all or uh, don't come back for a while you know some stay there there are choices to serve as a spirit guide to others and uh, there is a choice to to be a teacher um, uh, to uh, in, in the in the spirit world but but you know the earth at, at this time is so uh, so populated because most of the spirits want to come back and experience their ascension so that's uh, the explanation we hear often why why there is so many people here on Earth is because you know there is very few few spirits out there because they they all want to be playing on the field especially the experienced one want to be playing on the field to 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 be on Earth during the time of ascension. Uh, any comments before we go to the question of suicide? All right. Um, suicide. Um, uh, basically, uh, it just you you waste your body and you waste your opportunity, right? Uh, uh, again, in that Michael Newton's book, there was a great example where uh, uh, someone uh, someone c comes back after. Having had a having done a suicide after killing herself, and and she felt I mean she, she tells a story where she became pregnant uh, from you know someone who didn't have a you know from someone bad, and it was a shame for the family, and the family would be ashamed, and she would lose her life, and it was in some sort of strict rules of I don't remember which country, maybe England. Of 19th century, so and in in poor family, so so for her it was it, you know it was no exit from that situation, so she killed herself, and she comes back to the other side, and um, they say, how much can you uh, allow yourself that self pity, and how much you can waste good bodies? It, it's uh, you know again you you didn't you get you didn't uh, pass the lesson. You had so many good opportunities there. You could, uh, you know, if you told your parents that you're pregnant instead of killing yourself, they would actually accept it and help you, and you would raise your child. You would possibly would have to move to another village, but, but um, uh, you know, it, it could have resolved well, and, and you just escaped in, uh, again, you know, it wasn't the first suicide this, this, that Saul did in, in her incarnations. And that sort of, uh, you know, she was, uh, the word, reprimanded, but but um, in, with love and and then um, you, basically to to get a good a good body and to get a good situation, you have to deserve it. So if you 
a beginner, you might get, you know, a spoiled body and live like for a few seconds and then die at birth or something. But uh, if you if you uh, a good driver and um, give a promise, then you live, uh, you get a better body and uh, and more opportunities to to explore. And that's um, kind of messed up, though, right? That's sort again? of messed up. That's sort of messed up. You can live for a couple seconds and die after you're born. Yeah, that's what Bashar says. Some some spirits which are who have no experience living on Earth, like extraterrestrials from very different. Uh, civilizations they want to experience just few seconds of life on earth they they I know they take the bodies which are supposed to to die very soon and uh, and uh, that's what Bashar said and it makes sense basically uh, most of us because we're here in adult age we have tons of experience living on earth you we we are somewhere in between um, you know, we are not unexperienced souls, and we are not super experienced souls. Because at certain point, after you kind of get lots of experiences, you don't you don't come to Earth to do simple things. You come to Earth to do um, some other things. So typically, uh, the the age of soul is similar to age of uh, a human in life, like. Uh, a young soul is very stupid. It cannot really do anything. It wouldn't be able to survive in this. It's like a baby soul wouldn't be able to survive in this civilization. So, so it uh, it has to kind of mature a little bit. It has to have a lot of help. Maybe it would be uh, a, ch a loved child and and have a lot of support from parents and and no much not much uh, uh, trials and tests and uh, life would be easy. And then, when, as you grow, you kind of a young soul with a lot of um, kind of energy, and you're not very smart, so you try a lot of different things. It, this was like a, a, um, how do you call it? pirates or something like very very active and very uh, entrepreneurial. And then, as you grow, you start doing uh, big things, and then as you grow more, you start start doing like service things. You come here not because you want to experience it, but because you want to teach, teach other people. And you, you see those souls, especially when some, some children are so wise, you see they are so balanced, they, they are not like us. They are very balanced, very wise, very successful. They don't ask for much, than, for more than they can handle. So, and it's not the age of the person, it's just the age of the soul. You can see this kind of experienced, balanced souls which are very, very uh, loving and serving and uh, show just by their example how balanced can you be, how shiny, how you can shine without getting into trouble. I heard, I heard there's people that can tell when you're about to die or not, like months ahead. Yes. I heard people, I heard people can tell yeah. when you're going to die, is that true? Uh, I heard that too. I think that's true. I mean, sometimes you—it's—it's it's your decision. Uh, Bashar says no one dies without deciding, deciding to to go. Obviously, it it's, it's it happens often. It would happen on 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 a spirit level, but but some people decide to go just 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 on on this physical level. They just say it's time for me to go. I'm so ready. You, so you mean so like so like children that are you know. Like stillborns, or aren't able to be carried to full term. <laughs> um, another idea that was introduced to me was that you know these babies at these entities were also possibly healing, you know, um, experiences, um, experiences for the body of the mother to be healed, possibly just um, you know that the that the baby entity just wanted to you know, experience what it, you know, feels like first to, you know, first gather whether it really, truly wants to be here. Um, however, what you said also resonates with me as well as, you know, um, what, what, what you said as well. Yeah, Justin, you're, you're, you're right on about that. It was the, um, 
it was the experience when, when the child comes in here and dies at an early age or the baby, um, usually mm -hmm. that choice that was made at a higher level, but when it comes down and it's it, it, it passes over reached, you know, very early in the stages of life, it's usually a sign also to bring healing to those around. Um, usually it's seen that uh, the child never really got to live, but yet at that point, at that moment, it was given an opportunity for those uh, family members or friends around that child to maybe uh, shift its perspective into more of uh, raising a vibration of love, uh, more compassion, um, understanding uh, maybe a little bit more about you know about bringing their their soul some kind of upliftment. You know what I mean? is to really help balance that being or to give them an opportunity, um, something pertaining to death itself, um, to bring that, you know, we keep judging maybe like uh, from our perspective, it wasn't, you know, why so sudden? You know, that's not fair. You know? Yeah, because last year that was definitely, you know, um, a very profound experience to you know, have experienced, um, especially, you know, when I even have, you know, confirmed validation of the night it happened, actually having an astral experience where I left my body and actually was able to, like, see the soul <laughs> contract, if you will, and the soul that came down into my twin flame and then you know to have everything happen and and whatnot it definitely was was something like okay you know <clears throat> looking for silver linings and um, things you know as to okay what are things that are beneficial um, things that we learned from that we grew from um, and definitely felt you know felt it from that you know um, it definitely was 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 real to me and, and was profound to me and you know definitely put me in a different you know state of consciousness and and uh, and being um, and then to have that experience you know it was it was you know I've experienced you know death um, of of family and friends. Um, I watched my grandfather, you know, pass, like, actually leave his body. He was in a coma for, like, three days, pretty much, and <clears throat> we were trying to get me a plane ticket and get me to Texas to see him, and uh, they just kept on telling him, he'll be here, he'll be here, and I finally got there, and after I got there, he had opened up his eyes. They told him, you know, he's coming, he's coming, I get there, and I grab his hand, and um, he opens his eyes, turns his head, and he couldn't talk, but I could, I just felt like he was, you know, speaking with me through his eyes, and I just, I could feel that energy, and I wasn't able to sleep, everyone else was asleep, and I just remember, you know, sitting at my grandpa's side, and, and then I went from being at his side to sitting in the chair, and it was interesting because now when I'm able to reflect on it, I actually am able to reflect on it with, you know, my new perspective and with, with different eyes, if you will. And I'm able to actually feel and perceive what was going on in that, you know, and in, in that time from when I got there and him coming to briefly and then to you know, everyone being asleep, and the only one that was awake was me, and I was, and I was there to, like, witness him, you know, sign off, and just go in peace, and it was, it was just that, it was very peaceful, um, he had, he had stomach cancer, but, like, he, um, he went away at peace though and, and it's interesting now too because I've had I had the aha moment a couple times where I was able to like hear if you will what he was saying to me with his eyes and his heart you know um, and those are things that are like you know really 
you know, they're, they're happy things, you know, and they're things that when I reflect on, they bring happy thoughts, and it doesn't, and it doesn't, it doesn't bring a low vibration idea of death, and especially now, you know, having new understandings of spirit and relationship with spirit and myself as well, and understanding, right. you know, the nature of the soul and spirit. Um, and Justin, well, it's like, what have you, see how much experience that you've taken away from that? Just the fact that you've come to the near-death experience yourselves and those that you've loved, you know, around you. Look what, how you have grown from that, you see? You're, yeah. You don't really fear death, do you? No, I mean, and, I mean, my cousin two years ago, Christmas Eve, was, was you know, he, he his, his life ended because of a drunk driver, you know, a young drunk driver. And I had an experience where I... I I toiled with I I, I truly to, I did toil with death of my own choosing. However, I didn't feel if it really was. I almost felt as if I was like in a trance or something. And the next thing I really I, I heard someone say say some say something. And the next thing I really remember is you know this this person like helped two people helping me out. And then after that, that's when, you know, I came back and when I got back from the hospital, um, you know, there was, a, there was a book that just like magically appeared in my locker about Buddhism, about Taoism, um, a book called The Four Agreements. Um, so I started reading those and get out of my forced vacation at the time, we'll call it. I would um, go to the different religious, you know, church meetings and groups, and um, and uh, it really, it really did change. It really changed, and um, having all those experiences, it really has, you know, transformed my idea and my feelings. Because I remember when I was a child, like even growing up into my young teens, like, like. I'd see death and stuff in movies and whatnot, but when I watch TV shows about the idea of like, you know, the sun ex exploding and the whole solar system might like, be non-existent or like a giant asteroid, you know, coming in the planet, that used to like literally bring me to tears. Oh, one thing is um, important. How do we remember the person that um, that is gone? And um, Somehow, often sh the death shadows the the life of the person, especially if the death was uh, from from disease. Then uh, we remember that sick person uh, dying on the bed, especially in all the details of the of the decay of the body. Um, and I guess it's it's not the best. It's 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 a way, but it may be not the best way to remember the person. Right, right, Max. If I may, it it really is. It, it's like more the people. Usually, the people that die, we we tend to remember them how they died. That's the like the usually the the more recent memories that we have is like how they died or the tragedy. But we keep remember forgetting that it's more really how they lived. Remembering the the brilliance of how they lived and what you took away from that person. And, you know, people will talk about the tragedy, but it should be, I remember some of the channelers talking about it, it's a celebration. Yeah. It should be a celebration for their, for their passing, but, you know, in, in a way that really brings out the best of how they lived and how Bashar, they contribute. Yes. Bashar says that, you know, while we are mourning the person here, yeah. I uh, remember there is a celebration on the other side because yeah, yeah. death here is birth on the other side. Right, right. It's a reunion there. Uh, Michael Newton describes several of those reunions. They are wonderful because they can, uh, on the other side, they can um, be very creative and have um, feasts of uh, with, with a lot of beauty and imagination. You know, um, he describes just how friends and family meet uh, the newly arrived person and uh, they have a feast there. Very, very visual, very uh, attractive to that person from that life. Yeah, 
in, in, in some of the channels, and I've heard of a uh, cryon talk about this. It, it's like when you're on the other side, when you go back home to that re-evaluation, uh, reintegration of, of spirit in a way, or, or your lifetimes, you're you're looking in your past and the probabilities of your future. When you go back and you see that, you're right. It's a celebration of coming home, and to, to for their side of the veil and spirit, they're like, wow, you know, here's a human who's willing to, to or spirit to the willing to take on a physical form and a physiology and forget in a way that it is spirit, that it's a part of spirit, and that that it, that's a big leap of faith. It really is to come here to forget who you are, to forget your spirit side. You see? I got a, I got a question. Go ahead. So, uh, can, if you die and then you don't want to come back on this planet, can you go choose another planet? Um, generally, yes. Uh, there is advisory committee. That sometimes they might, you know, advise against or for this. But I know that yes, it is possible. Typically, uh, this Earth is so attractive that the the soul that gets, you know, gets to here don't want. To live, they want to reincarnate over and over. It's even a vicious cycle, you know. Buddha, Buddha taught that, you know, stop doing that. <laughs> get, get to. to because I want to move. I want to go on a certain planet that I want to go on. Because I'm, I don't like this how this planet's working out. Hmm. I don't know. Would, uh, would the collective consciousness of that other planet would they allow you in that state? I feel like I, I feel like I could as a uh, I want to go on a canine planet. Maybe you are from there. Maybe they just sent you for uh, representation uh, to watch the ascension, and after you uh, watch it, you come back as planned. <laughs> you know, it's yeah. funny, Max, that you bring that up. I've um, I've I've heard that when you're when you come to this planet, whether it's you know thousands, hundreds of thousands of years ago, when your soul essence comes to this planet, it it, it aligns with the crystalline grid of the planet. Your your records or what you call the akash is in this this state of um, absorption into the planet. What you do as you walk on the planet, everything is recorded in your akash. And in the uh, what you call the um, um, uh, what is that the uh, what are the things in the bodies that have different colors oh, chakras chakras yes yes but it aligns with the magnetic of the field of the earth also with your body mm -hmm. because the body is also the in the DNA is magnetic mm -hmm. but it, it it's fascinating how your memories and everything that it's recorded into that and what you do here it how it transitions and it raises the collective of the planet into the next lifetime into the next lifetime as you as you uh, come back again and again on the planet so it's really helping the planet to ascend uh, how do I find out if I'm from another planet um, speak to different channelers and ask they usually uh, the the people on the other side, they, they know, and often they tell you. Okay. Not uh, even just that. If you truly feel in your heart that you're from somewhere different specifically, then I mean, that's kind of a straight-up answer. So not even just for lying, just feeling and knowing your intu intuition is telling you what the truth is. Because I feel like I'm from another planet with canines. There you go. Do you feel truly that's what it is? Yes. And there you go. There's the answer. No need to ask any... So you can ask more questions now, you know, which which species, what they are, and um, what's the story, and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> exactly. Uh, um, I, I, I sometimes go to psychic fairs. Um, just Google for psychic fair nearby. Usually they announce that meetup.com, meetup meetup.com, other psychic fairs are announced, and you go there, and um, for twenty dollars you can get a psychic reading, and most of the psychics are very psychic. They they tell you. <coughs> uh, 
I have you heard me speak Pleiadian? Go ahead, speak Pleiadian. Who is that? Blue triangle, oh, green triangle. Go, go ahead. Green triangle, Sabrina. <laughs> <laughs> speak Pleiadian. Come on. You don't know who the green triangle is, Max. <laughs> I, I'm behind the time. I remember your previous avatars. <laughs> Come on, speak Pleiadian. What, my Pleiadian? Ariona kia la nona kia ko oriana na kaskio ko oriata ka. To sono ku ka tuku ala na na kio ko tuku ataka. I don't think that's Pleiadian. I think that's Syrian. Um. No, I was listening to the song that Maria. Serena, that's why I ask you. I get. Go ahead. Go ahead, Maria. She got muted. Hi, everyone. Hi, Sabrina. Hello. Hello. They or more auto reangled on my day so on a hot day. Good hot no more. Oh my Feels like a bunch of stuff's getting crammed in my head, but like I have reptilian. Toko shana akakia tanana ki yoku wana. Na skuruata ani osoku osoruana kioku olana katu sana ariona saku tenio kulua sanio kotu oruono sku orutu das pleiri. The song sounds slightly different. Hello, Max. How are you? Um, I need to go in a minute. Um, I I'm happy. Um, let me let me say one more thing, um, which I think is is could be helpful to some. Uh, I to to celebrate the life of a relative who has gone. Uh, one of the things is to remember the stories hi. about hi the stories hi hi Adriana the stories about their lives and um, uh, you know when people come together for the to mourn the death you know that's maybe a good time to remember the good about the person and important things about the person and important stories. And and you start digging into these stories, and you go to family albums, and collect these photographs, and you look closer. Especially now with these all electronics, you can take the photograph and magnify it, and you see the face much better, and you can see it on tiny photograph. And then you read from the face a lot of the past. <coughs> on some of the photographs, you can see people in certain situation, and you just realize what was happening. And you just discover a lot in that past life, and in this life, you, in this past life, you discover a lot of things, and um, and that kind of gives you a new perspective and a new relation with that life, and you learn about yourself as well because you know that's what happened to me, you know, with my investigations. I dug into, I collected all photographs of and all the stories about my mother, father, and grandfather and grandmother and um, and it, it, it is a big part of my life now 
and and many things I just realized maybe this year I realized something which I, you know I had the facts but my life experience allows me to get a new perspective on what was happening back then um, one moment I guess I can share it was a moment when my grandfather, my very close to me grand grandfather, was close to close to death, and I think what happened: my grandmother traded her life for his life, so he recovered and she died. I think that's what happened. Um, so that th this kind of realizations change a big of you know a lot of perspective. Um, oh my gosh, Max! Thank yeah, you for that idea. I think that's what my grandpa did for my grandma mm. because she's still going strong and that was when I was 18 I just turned 30 on Saturday so 12 years ago and she's still going strong too she's like even dating and stuff still she's, nothing wrong with that yeah yep. she's doing something that's interesting and, and la last advice I wanted to give like when um, you leave the whole the house. Uh, usually, the youngest sibling keeps the house, and everybody else leaves. And they keep the the photographs and uh, photo uh, and albums and and uh, whatever letters. And then, if the if they leave the house, sometimes they should trash it. Uh, make sure that you know this invaluable photographs and records are not trashed. Uh, make copies now electronically. It's very easy. Don't you know? And you know, because of the conflicts in the family, often you know, people don't, don't talk to each other. And when you finally ask, "Where are those photographs I wanted?" and they say, "Oh, sorry, we did renovation, and you know, we lost them." So um, you know, if uh, if somebody dies, you know, soon after, and it's also a very good excuse for reunion and forgiveness and um, integration in the family. Uh, go after the photographs and the letters and make copies. You don't have to take the originals, but you know, now it's easy. Just take your telephone and and photograph. And uh, write a book. Write a book for your children. Write a book about your ancestry and about the, your life and lives of your um, your close close relatives. Um, it, it's it's a fascinating story, and you learn so much. There are traits that go. There are traits that go in the souls, and there are traits that go in genetics. And some of the things, some of the behavior traits, we inherit genetically from our parents and grandparents. So, so you learn a lot about yourself, and it's a learning experience. All right, let's do the blessing and, and wrap up. We can continue maybe some other time. Uh, Brian, Sabrina, everybody. Thank you, Max. Thank you. Sorry, that was my okay. cat. <laughs> okay, I guess I'll, I'll do it. Yes. Thank you. Dananaka kioko no akia ku alia paskiro tu no asia ka. Tioro na skurata, alio na skurata, sonua anukua, sari kia kio, orono skuara kia ti, halana skuru ananas kariotoko, sono kuruaka anasu oru anas kia ka, to sario na skurata, tanyo oru anas kiorotu. No aratu Olonas ku oruna suarata Tash siuka ario sani Carioso oruana si Keskio naka atu Toso noaka ario sanaka To saranaka ka Look within and see the light that shines see the light that comes from within you that has been there and will always be see the eternity within you see the light that shines see the light that flourishes that emanates from within all of you bless you 
Embrace you. And find the love. Find the peace. Find it within you, within each other. See that there was always you. You in eternity, you in the now, you in forever. And love one another in a way which honors you and all there is. Amen. Amen. Green leaves, green plant sprouts, goes up from the ground as phoenix goes. The flames have gone, the dust gives rise to new plants and new flowers, and the roots go as a tree upside down into the ground and intertwine and communicate and merge with each other, making a carpet of life. We die every day. We leave this world for the world of spirit in our dreams. We are dead at night and we come back to earth with a breath, a breath of awakening. Peace and love be with you. Remember and rise as Phoenix. Resurrect. Re get reborn every day and be in joy no matter what. Thank you. Namaste. 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 Namaste.